Righto, tell you other champs. Today we're going to have the ultimate battery life shootout between the old MacBook Pro 13, the Intel version, the new MacBook Pro 13, the M1 version, the M1 MacBook Air, a Lenovo Ultrabook with the latest AMD 4800U CPU, the best they have, and the XPS 13 2 and one with the latest generation Intel CPUs, the 1165G7. So yes, the 11th generation. So this is the best of the best when it comes to the silicon. Of course, the Intel MacBook Pro is one generation behind. So this is good. The best silicon on the PC side versus the best silicon on the Mac side. Which one's better? And give me a like if you want more M1 Mac stuff or comparisons with the PCs. Also, you might want to subscribe. Be a champ. Come on. Let's have a great day together. The reason I've done this, I was actually doing this test for myself. And the reason why is my girlfriend. She's always complaining. She does the Zoom thing. My Intel Mac... The battery lasts like an hour, it just dies. I don't think she uses Zoom, I think she uses Google Class, I don't know what it is, whatever. It's a video stuff, right? So I just started comparing the battery life on these new Macs compared to, you know, the best silicon on PCs and her old Intel Mac. And I want to say right up front, this is by no means scientific. There are way too many variables to say that this is 100% accurate without a doubt. That being said, I think this is a good guide and it will give you a rough idea of the difference between these. You've got to think of the variables, right? So the Intel Mac is actually, whatever, four or five months old. But it does say that it has 100% capacity of the battery. The M1 Macs are brand new, but they have higher resolution displays that will use more power. The laptops have different size batteries as well. If I was going to say anything, I would say most of the things are stacked against the M1 Macs. For example, the resolution, as I said before. That higher res display is going to use more power up. Plus the fact that when I was using Zoom, that's not native for the Mac. So that's going to count against the Mac as well. Now I did try to make it as even as possible. Same screen brightness. I didn't change the resolution of the displays. I didn't see any point in that. That's not real world. But the same browser when I could. Tried to run native at all times. The only times I didn't run native with the Macs was Zoom and whatever. But anyway, let's get into it. And you take it for what it's worth. But I worked on percentage because that makes more sense than how many hours. And you'll see at the end, it's very interesting. Because I worked on percentage, you can really get a gauge of how much longer one laptop is going to last over the other and make sure you stay tuned very interesting result anyway first thing i've done is charge them all up fire them all up then once they were fully charged and there was nothing open i just closed them left them overnight when i woke up all the macs 100 even the old intel mac 100 battery life and this is the thing right when it comes to the amd and intel silicon it may well be at the mercy of the oem how well the standby works. But the XPS 13 is certified Evo, so it's supposed to be really good. The 4800U lost 6%, so it was 89%. Yes, I know it doesn't make sense because that Lenovo only charges to 95%. It needs to be calibrated, but it lost 6%. The Intel 11th generation and the XPS 13 2-in-1 lost 5%. So it went from 100% to 95%. So clearly the Macs have got that standby power working really well. Surprised that the old Intel chip was still 100% as well. And just bear that in mind that the Lenovo can only charge to 95%. So you just got to add that 5%. So now once I opened them, I fired up Cinebench on all of them. 10 minute run on Cinebench, 100% CPU. And at the end of that, the Intel Mac went from 100% to 82%. So it lost 18%. The MacBook Pro went from 100% to 94%. The MacBook Air went from 100% to 95%. So see how the MacBook Pro used more power because it's got the fan and, and it can sustain higher clock speeds. And then if we look at the AMD 4800U, that went down from 89% to 73%. The Intel system went from 95% down to 82%. So I closed them up after that. One thing to note is the test doesn't go exactly 10 minutes. On the Intel Mac, it actually went 1 minute 20 longer. And on the MacBook Air, it went like 40 seconds longer because it finishes the last run. Whatever, it's not going to make that much difference. Then I slammed the GPU 100%. So I opened them all up, used the default browser, downloaded Geekbench, and run the OpenCL benchmark six times. Now this is running native on all of them. Intel Mac went from 82% to 75%. The M1 MacBook Pro went from 94% to 93%. The MacBook Air went from 95% to 93%. That's minus two. The AMD system went from 73% down to 69% and the Intel system went from 82% to 76%. So I closed them all up, jotted down all the information, then I opened them all up and then I downloaded Zoom on all of them and then run Zoom for 40 minutes. 
Now, I did do that on the Intel Mac first. Then I closed it and then I done it one by one. And on the next test, I done it in the reverse order. But as I said, it's a rough guide. So, zoom. <laughs> Remember, this is not native to the M1 Max. <laughs> this is why my missus is crying. So, now I did run them all in the gallery mode. The Intel Mac went from 75 to 60%, so 15% lost. MacBook Pro went from 93 to 86%, 7% lost. MacBook Air went from 93% to 85%, so it lost 8% more than the MacBook Pro for some reason. Don't know why. The AMD 4800U went from 69% to 57%, and that's a loss of 12%. And then the Intel 11th generation went from 76% to 60%. So that's minus 16. So yeah, this thing chews through battery. But even though it's not running native on the M1s, it lost less percentage. And you can imagine if it is native, it's going to be even better, right? So now I downloaded Chrome and then just run YouTube for 30 minutes. Because although the screens are the same sort of brightness, resolution makes a huge difference to battery life. And, and if you have a look at the two PCs, they're both Full HD or the XPS 13 is Full HD+. Plus. So that will use a lot less power than high resolution Mac. So anyway... After this, I downloaded Chrome, played back the video for 30 minutes on all of them, and this is after all my tests, the Intel Mac is 51%, the M1 MacBook Pro 82%, the M1 MacBook Air 80%, the 4800U 51%, again remember, it started at 95, so really that would be 56%, and the 11th generation Intel CPU is at 54%. So I stopped the test here and said, I'll call that a day. That's enough data for me. So in conclusion, what I have here, right? So if I was able to replicate that test 100% again, exactly. The Intel Mac would be left with 1% battery. The AMD 4800U would be left with 7% battery because it started at 95%. And the 11th generation XPS 13 2-in-1 would have 8% left. Now let's talk about the M1 Max. The M1 MacBook Pro would have 62% battery life left compared to those ones, they're nearly finished. The M1 MacBook Air would have 60% battery left. So conceivably, you could run the test another three more times when the other ones are just about out of juice done. Just thought I'd share it with you guys. Make out of it what you will. Of course, as I said, it's not scientific, but it gives you an idea of the difference in battery life. So anyway, catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.